on today's Locked On Mavs. It's trade season, baby. Yes, it is. We're under a week from the NBA draft in which we don't have a pick. But could the Mavericks get into the draft? Coming up next, we'll tell you how they can. It's the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. I'm Luka Doncic, and this is Locked On Mavericks Podcast. Don't believe you shouldn't be here. And welcome. You are locked on to the Dallas Mavericks. My name is Nick Engstead, media member and coordinator for the Locked On Podcast Network. And joining me, as always, my co-host, contributor at Mavs.com. The trade machine Titan, the one more thinking. What you got for me, Isaac Harris? Oh, you know I love the trade machine. And uh a new website that you know came into existence over the past year or so of the trade nba.com site That's which I think, I think it got bought out by someone but real quick off off the top today is ted lasso day and oh. I, I just i want to say i've been watching it warms my heart this is this is really hard for me because i don't do like funny dumb tv shows and how dare you it's kind of dumb but it's like fun too and so anyway, for the longest time, Nick was like, hey, you got to watch this show. Please watch it. Literally every single person in my life who had watched it's like, great show, great show. Even my pastor that I work with is like, hey, you need to watch this show. And I was like, man, okay, I'll try. I watched one episode and I'm like, I, I'm, I just can't do it. This is, I'm not this type of person. Nick continued to get on me about this. <laughs> you know what? I tried a few more, a few more episodes and I'm all in. And I'm, I'm all in. But I'm more fascinated than anything. I'm fascinated because I'm like deep diving this way more than what I should. I've thought about Ted Lasso, the individual, so much because there's something. It's like Ted Lasso and Giannis. <laughs> okay, now you're part of the cult. It's a little cultish now. Um, <laughs> it's like the combo of Ted Lasso and Giannis gives me hope in humanity. Okay, because mm. two like genuinely nice, good dudes, and they're so universally liked. And that's what I was so intrigued with. Like my, my wife joked, I was watching it in bed the other night and she joked, she's like, you're just watching the show because of peer pressure. And I'm like, Oh, yeah. she hit you with that. Yeah. Cause I've already told her, I'm like, it's not my show. And she's like, why are you watching? If it's not your type of show, I'm like, because people love this show. And here I am. I'm, I'm all in. And she's laughing about Would it. Would you jump off a bridge if everybody <laughs> else is going <laughs> to? So, yeah. I mean, it's like, I just think there's something so refreshing I don't think you can hate the show or hate him. I think it can be like not your genre of show, but sure. it's impossible to hate Ted Lasso. I, I don't I don't think you possibly can. And I'm like, hey, dude, I'm going to root for him. And this is a fun show. Today's episode is brought to you by the Locked On NBA Draft live show that is happening next week, Thursday night. NBA Draft coach Chad Ford, Locked On NBA Draft host Rafael Barlow, a rising star who Chad Ford called the Cade Cunningham of draft coverage. I was Ooh. like, that's that's a pretty big compliment right there. We'll be live from WFAA Studios in downtown Dallas. So Chad Ford will be in town. So if you're uh, walking around, maybe you'll see Chad Ford uh, and me and Raphael and John Krause. It's hard to miss John Krause, six five ball. Uh, <laughs> follow Locked On NBA on YouTube. So go subscribe to that channel. Get our coverage live July 29th at 7 p.m. It's going to be awesome. All right, on today's show, we're going to be doing some some trades around the draft a little bit. The draft is. A week from yesterday. It's wild that it's coming up already, Thursday. So, Isaac, hit us with our first big trade. Yeah. So, obviously, the Mavericks don't have a pick in the first round. They don't have a pick in the second round. So, we've been super envious of the draft parties for media that's going to be taking place. And, like, we don't have one this year because I'm Mavericks creating done. all this draft content for the Lockdown NBA channel, and we are in none of it. Like, the ultimate yeah. mock draft, these like the live show, nothing, nothing at all. But I'm, I've been so far in on this draft class, like the past three or four weeks, I've just been deep diving so many people. And so I'm super excited, but it's like, that's also a time where there's so many different trades that happen, right? Like I think back to the Jimmy Butler, Larry marketing trade, like, Whoa, what's going on? Like, this is a crazy mm -hmm. trade. It, you know, reshaped some things in the conferences and, uh, you know, that's when he went to Minnesota and didn't really work out, but still big time trade, big time name. 
And I think there could be some movement, you know, coming in this draft. So it's like, all right, let's play some hypotheticals. Let's look at if the Mavericks do swing and make some type of deal, whether it's a bigger type deal, which we have a few of those we could throw out or some smaller ones too. So now I always preface this with any trades. This is not a, uh, not always trades that we would do, not trades that I would do, not trades that Nick would do. We might give our opinion on it. These are trades that we could see some type of like framework of like, let's throw some ideas out and have some fun with it. You just said the equivalent of re these retweets are not endorsements, basically, is what you just. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's what you just said verbally. <laughs> um, if I'm comfortable enough of saying, hey, I would do that, I will tell you. But some of these trades, I'm not comfortable with it, but I could see a framework being there. So Fair. let's just talk about the first one that. I've seen circulating on Twitter. Somebody tagged us in this. I think somebody actually wrote about this and actually included this because it was actually screenshot in an article. And it was with Houston. Houston has like three first-round draft picks, by the way, 24, 25, and obviously number two overall. Eric Gordon picked 24 for Josh Richardson, assuming he opts in to you know, his player option, $11 million, in Tyrell Terry. So for Houston, the Houston's case is, all right, we have three first-round picks. We have 24-25. We'll attach one of those picks to get off the remaining salary of Eric Gordon past this year. He's mm -hmm. due $18 million this year. Then it's 19. Then it's 20 after that. Like, It's a lot of money for Eric Gordon. It's a Gordon. lot of money. So if Houston's saying, hey, we're rebuilding anyway. We don't need bigger contracts on our roster. Let's swap his contract out with Josh Richardson. We'll give up one of these picks in the 20s. And we'll basically swap out the pick for Tyrell Terry and like, hey, we can use the backcourt help too. If you're Dallas, Dallas looks at it and says, all right, well, Josh Richardson really didn't fit with the team last year. We'll take the swing on maybe a better player in Eric Gordon, but we also get the 24th pick in the draft too. And there might be some guys in the bottom of the first that they like, that they might like more than Tyrell Terry at that point. What do you think? Who says no on that? Not you, but who would say no, Dallas or Houston first? I think the Rockets look at what OKC did the last couple of years and go, there's no way we're giving up a first round pick in order to get off of Eric Gordon. We're going to get a first round pick for Eric Gordon. It's, the, uh, but it's also Tillman. It is Tillman too. So what does that mean? He doesn't want to pay. I mean, are, they're not even anywhere close to the luxury tax, are they? No, but does he ever want to spend money? Yeah, but you gotta you gotta pay somebody something. <laughs> Very true. Very true. I guess they have John Wall. They're paying him something for sure. But yeah, no, I don't think they do that because I think they're going to try to go the Al Horford route or something like that, where they swap that swap Eric Gordon for a worse player. That's maybe a, a you know, even a worse contract than this one, get a pick in return. I think that's the smart thing to do. Uh, the trade in a vacuum though, for the Mavs, I, it takes a lot of cap space. So yeah. if they do, if the Mavericks do a move like this, it's they're they're trying to walk and chew gum at the same time, right? They're trying to, oh, we're trying to win now by getting Eric Gordon, but then they're also taking up all the cap space that they could have used to sign somebody better than him, and then getting a, a draft pick to say we're also developing young players too. They're like trying to do both things at the same time, and I think they do both things worse. That's true. Yeah. Cause you even look at Eric Gordon's three point shooting too. He shot 32% from three of the last two seasons. The last so two seasons have been it's bad. not like you're saying, well, man, Eric Gordon, 40% three point shooter yeah. knocked down. He would. So yeah, I mean, he makes, like I said, he makes $18 million next season. Then it's 19 after that. Then it's 20.9 after that. So he's on the books for not like three more seasons after like this current one that just ended. So it's a, it's a lot of money for somebody like Eric Gordon I could, I don't think I would. I don't think I would do it. Let me throw you a trade that's a little bit bigger than this one. I thought you were going to start with a, with a big fun one to start. <laughs> oh, I have some, I have, I have some big one. Okay. Chris Hobbs Porzingis mm. and CJ McCollum make like almost the same amount of money. I asked Mike Richmond this, and I'm going to ask you the same question. Who has to add what? To which side? For Chris Hobbs Porzingis and CJ McCollum. Now, Mavericks fans would probably say, you have to add stuff to the Mavs side yeah. because Porzingis is bad. But CJ McCollum has not necessarily been that great for the Blazers. Blazers fans are like done with him. His defense is not great. Uh, he's, you know, scorer, sure, but that's not, he doesn't really do anything else for him. And uh, Mike Richmond said that the Mavs would have to add, or the, the, the Mavs would probably have to add a little bit more to it, but yeah. that. Um, because big men, are, you know, big men and stuff aren't in demand, but there's, there's, on both sides, I think you could make a case. Yeah, I don't, I just don't see a world that Portland would have to add anything to that. I, I don't. I mean, I. Uh, the other thing is the other thing I was going to point out is he's thirty. I mean, it's not like he's 
super young at this point and he, he's aging. Porzingis is younger. He's under contract for longer. There's just a couple of things here and there. Yeah. I mean, I'm open to have that, con- have that conversation for sure. I, I love CJ. I love CJ's fit in Dallas too, alongside Luca. So yeah, I, I just don't think, you know, I would be shocked if Portland would, would go that route. Uh, so what does, what do the Mavericks add to CJ McCollum is my question to uh, Chris Alf Porzingis is the question. Oh, I, I think you'd have to say Brunson future first. Both. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I just said like last week that I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade CJ for Ben Simmons. So like CJ in, in a way, like that's, that's their only piece, right? Like you, that's your only piece next to Dame. So that's your only way to get another like legit number two guy. So if your pitch to Dame is, Hey, we're going to go get Christos Porzingis and let's just take personal stuff aside. The guy who stood in the corner that Rick Carlos said, Hey, you're just going to stand in the corner and shoot some corner threes and be like Davis Bertans for a playoff series. Like, I don't know if I, if I'm Dame, like we're getting off CJ for like, if he's fully healthy, I get all of that. And I'm not saying like, I think Christos can get back to a, a high level of basketball, but Coming off this type of season to say CJ McCollum, I think that's a, a little, uh, yeah. I don't think CJ McCollum's value is that low. Okay. Just checking. All right. Yeah. Coming up, we got some more trades. Isaac's got some bigger, more fun ones to come and, and get in. We got some uh, Lowry DeRozan scenarios possibly on the horizon. We'll get into that. But before we do, bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your sports action. Baseball is in full swing right now. And if you like money, bet against the Rangers every single game because, good Lord, the Rangers are really bad right now. Uh, Bryce Patrick is just having one of the worst times right now hosting Lockdown Rangers. But you can go. You can go. Uh, did you see his Lockdown Now video today? It's the saddest thing no. you've ever seen. He's wearing a backwards hat and sunglasses. Uh, but go bet on him. Go bet on the Olympics, too. Uh there's so many different things you can bet on for the Olympics right now. You can go bet on uh, table tennis winners. Fan Sing Dong is a minus 135 favorite. Can Ma Long take over and take fans thrown for men's table tennis singles? If you, if you have big feelings about that, go bet. You're probably a degenerate. Use the promo code LOCKDOWN. Get a 50% welcome bonus to your first deposit. Bet online. Your online sportsbook experts. All right, Isaac Harris, let's get into some more trades. Give me another one. All right, this was uh, kind of similar to the King. Well, this is with the Kings, and similar to the trade that we talked about uh, when mm. it, we were talking about deals that we threw out to Matt George, host of Locked on Kings. And, you know, the reports that we've seen recently is like, hey, Kings are shopping this ninth overall pick for players that can help them now. And if the Kings are so dead set of saying, we are are desperate to make the playoffs. Like we want to be a legitimate better team. What can they package together and go out and get a guy who might not come there in free agency, but is under contract. And they're like, all right, let's, let's swing for it. Let's let make a legit swing. So let's say they do call up Dallas and, and they say, buddy Hild, Marvin Bagley, number nine for Porzingis and Josh green. And now, Kings fan, if you're standing right off the top, you're like, all right, Kings fans or Kings would never do that. What would a Kings lineup of De'Aaron Fox, Halliburton, Harrison Barnes, and KP as a top four? Like, that's better than what they've had, right? Yeah, I, mean, I, I, I like we we devalue Porzingis so much, but the spacing he would bring to that team would be massive. Yes, with a front court of Porzingis and Harrison Barnes, with the back court of Fox and Halliburton. That's a lot of fun, in in my opinion. And so they've been now, starting Rashawn Holmes and Bagley, and like these aren't guys that space the floor. They can shoot a little bit, but they're not spacing the floor all that much. And when White you look side. at the, <laughs> when you look at the money difference, like there's I, I say only in this, but there's a ten million dollar money difference between Buddy and KP every year, right? I mean, because Buddy's yeah. under contract for multiple seasons too, like KP. If you're the Kings, you say, all right, the upside of of Kristaps Porzingis. He's like a guy like that's never going to come here in free agency probably. So now you have an under contract for multiple season and the Marvin Bagley stuff, like where are they at with him? Are they going to get like positive value if they trade him? Or is it just a, Hey, we just got to write this off and say, here we go. And then you're just swapping out pick nine for Josh green, basically. Right. What you said about Marvin Bagley is the same thing. The Mavericks are saying about Porzingis. I think right now, (laughs) 
I don't know. Are we going to get positive value for him? I don't know. We're going to ride this out, I guess. <laughs> so if you're Dallas in this scenario, you know, you're not getting a, you know, you're in two camps with KP. I think if you're in the camp of like, all right, you, you want to trade KP. If like, if you're in that camp, you're either in the camp of, Hey, I would trade KP for multiple pieces to go on the team. Or you're like, Hey, I would only trade KP if it's going to get me a bona fide number two guy next to Luca. I think you're in one of those two camps. If you're like, if you're in the camp of like, oh, do you want to trade KP? Now, is Buddy Hield the like a bona fide number two? No, he's not. Is he insurance for Tim Hardaway Jr.? Yeah. Could you play Tim and Buddy together? Yeah. Not in the playoffs. Not defensively, but no, yeah. But then you swing for Marvin Bagley, right? Who is a younger version of a Dwight Powell, and you say, hey, this is like, can you, can Dwight Powell like mentor you and mold you into, <laughs> teach you how to uh, roll and hey, you can have all of these. Uh, I'm going to take a page out of Giannis's book. Coach, if you want me to be Dwight Powell, then I'm going to go back to Greece. <laughs> Did you read that story? Yeah, that There's was part great. of the story where Giannis, assistant coach looks at Giannis and says, look at Nick Batum right there. If you work hard, you can become Nick Batum. And he goes, Coach, if, uh, if I'm going to become Nick Batum in this league, I'm going back to Greece. <laughs> so, okay, so if you're Dallas, do you make this move? Then you have the ninth pick overall. Who do you take at number nine if you're Dallas? You're getting Ooh. Buddy. You're getting you know Marvin Bagley back. There's three names I'm looking at. Do they take the guy? Do they take Sangoon? Yeah, Sangoon. Do they take him and say, all right, let's pair you up with Luca? Do they take a Davion Mitchell if he falls? Yeah. Do they take my Book guy? Knight. This is my guy. James Book Knight, Book Knight yeah. is my guy, man. Like this is, oh man, this is, this has been my, dude. now he's like shot up draft boards and now he's like top 10 for some people. So, but like that would be a crazy draft night move. If they walked out, if they traded Porzingis and Josh Green and they walked away with a buddy, Marvin Bagley and James Book Knight or Davion Mitchell. And you're like, all right, you don't get the, the like bona fide number two the to replace KB, number two, yeah. but you have some pieces that you know, like, you know, Buddy Hield would play. Like, could Buddy Hield get the bump that Tim Hardaway got last year of being the shooter two guard next to Luca? So, yeah, I mean, you'd have two swings at two young guys and a Bagley and like a Book Knight or Mitchell, whoever it is, too. So, yeah. all right. So, this is another trade that we talked about, the exact same kind of framework, but take out the pick and, and Buddy and replace it with Barnes. Would you do this? KP for Harrison Barnes back in Dallas now that Donnie Nelson and Rick Carlisle are gone uh, and Marvin Bagley. I mean, yeah, I'm partial to Harrison I was going to say, so. <laughs> you're maybe the worst person to ask this for, but I think that, I mean, that one, if, if they do a, a trade like that, then the Kings are thinking very similar thing to what you said. This is a young guy, Porzingis, that, you know, can kind of grow with our group that we can develop a little bit more. Maybe we can rehab his, his, you know, his skills a little bit more. And he's on the timeline of the rest of our guys, whereas Harrison Barnes is not. And he may not have more value the rest of his contract. Uh, we want to get a little younger in that sense. We want to uh, have all these guys grow together. Another, sh Basically another shot at a guy that's gonna be, that could be way better than Harrison Barnes, right? Because Porzingis yeah. can be. Uh, and then get off of Bagley because his parents hate that he's in Sacramento. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, I mean... That one's definitely – I didn't include that one because it didn't include a draft pick, so it wouldn't technically have to be on draft night. But it's intriguing too, especially how you feel about Marvin Bagley. And I know if I'm at Bagley and saying, oh, if I could go to Dallas and play with Luka, sign me up. Let's do it. That's uh, that's an upgrade over Dwight Powell in every way except for maybe like off the court, right? Like <laughs> the type yeah. of teammate in person Dwight Powell is like and every then, other – every on the court advantage Bagley would have for sure. How, how much would you pay for a shot of Bagley wearing the Hallow Luka shirt? Uh, that would be amazing That'd also be kind of i think there are some things that that you know sean sweeney and K jason kidd did that we talked about yesterday that they could do for marvin bagley oh they would like they would just be chomping at the bit for bagley <laughs> be like oh my gosh let's like Let's do this. It is very similar things to Giannis, right? Like he can handle the ball a little bit. He can dribble a little bit. He's not that great of a shooter, but he can finish around the basket really well. Yeah. Okay. I have another similar one for you. Ooh, I'm ready. Of Porzingis for like, if you're in the camp of like, I would, you would trade Porzingis for like multiple pieces for the roster. What if they called the Clippers and it's Zubats, Luke Kennard, Pat Beverly, and 25? Poof. So you get the pick, you get 25. For Porzingis and Tyrell Terry. The clips get the clips get Porzingis, so then all of a sudden they're trying to 
which is really well, funny because they, they just watched Porzingis be like semi useless against them. But but the Clippers' point of that is saying, all right, Kawhi's going to be out most of the year. Yeah. Now we have you know KP, Paul George, you know keep, and then a potential big three. Kawhi comes back, all that stuff come playoff time, moving forward. If you're Dallas, like I don't think I'm doing this. If I'm Dallas, uh, I think some some fans are listening right now saying, "No, I would do that right now." You know, blah 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 blah, because it's like, all right, you get a bunch of these guys who can theoretically play, like Zubats with Luca. I think you know, great in the regular season. I don't know what it looks like in the playoffs. It but was you- Zubats, Kennard, Patrick Beverly, and twenty five. Yeah, and twenty five. The the Patrick Beverly one is, oof, man, he looked. Yeah, there, he was rough at times in that playoff run last year, but. Yeah, but that's the thing. It's like, with, who would you go with twenty five? Oh well, well there, there's a guy out there that uh, Ayo Dosumo. Ayo, you know, yeah. This is uh just real quick from Chicago. You know who else from Chicago? Michael Finley had a little Jalen Brunson uh, connection. You know who else? Uh, you know who he's represented by Excel. Oh, let's go. He's uh he's twenty one. So many tweets today when somebody uh, a draft prospect signed with yeah, Excel Nike, and I got yeah. like three or four tweets today about it. I love it. Every time somebody signs with Nike or Excel, we're gonna get tweets. They, we're getting tweets about they're it. They're coming to Dallas. I'm, uh the Usman Garuba is a guy that a lot of people are talking about. He might be in that range too. No, he ain't 25. gonna be at twenty five. He'll be think he'll be way before yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like Garuba, but I owe my my dude at the end of the first, and I think there's some connections there. Mavericks like older players. Uh, he's over 20. He put up 26 and five last year at Illinois. Good defensive wing, bigger wing, bigger wingspan. Best guy on this uh, on an Illinois team. He's he fits the Jalen Brunson mold, and there's some connections there too. So uh, I like Io if they get back into the end of the first. So you just keep Brunson? Could you play him and Brunson together? I haven't watched him. That would be kind of that would be kind of tough. He he handled the ball a lot, at Illinois. So it's like, can he play off the ball? That's one of the biggest questions. Like, what is he? Yeah, but coming up, got some more trades. If you're loving this, you're going to love the rest of the podcast. (laughs) We'll get into that. But before we do, let me tell you about Built Bar. Built Bar is a protein bar. Tastes like a candy bar. They're delicious. I eat one almost every day. They have all kinds of stuff all the time. Built Boost, Built Bites, Built Broth, all kinds of stuff. And you can get them at Built.com. Use the promo code LOCKED15 to get 15% off your next order. The mint brownie, always solid. 130 calories, 17 grams of protein, only 4 grams of sugar in a bar that's covered in 100% chocolate. They're great. I also love the raspberry, cherry barcia, the double chocolate. A lot of people love the cookies and cream. Wasn't super a fan of that one, but a lot of people do love it. Everybody's taste buds are different. Go check it out. Isaac is pretty picky about stuff like this, and you love Built Bars. Oh, 100%. Love He's it. in. He's in on it. Again, promo code LOCKED15 to get 15% off at BuiltBar.com. All right, Isaac Harris, let's get into some more trades. Give me another one. Okay, Denver Nuggets. Ooh. They, they own the 26 overall pick. So I'm obviously only including trades with draft picks here because draft night deals. If Denver's sitting there saying they're scanning the league and they're like, who is it? if they don't think my, which one Monty Morris is under contract for like three or four more years at like nine million dollars? If they're saying, man, we might have a money crunch at some point, but is there another? And can Monty Morris be the point guard who holds us down for all year until Jamal Murray gets back? If they're looking around the league saying, who's a cheaper option that we could go get using our draft pick, using something else on the roster to go get us a point guard that can that run the show, fill the void of Jamal Murray for the year. And they look at Dallas and say, what about Jalen Brunson? And if if Dallas, if the deal is Jalen Brunson, Josh Richardson for Monte Morris, Compazzo, and 26. So they get Gary Harris back. <laughs> Josh Richardson. <laughs> so so if you're Denver, you're sitting in, you're like, all right, we get Brunson. Let's put Brunson to a starter role. Let's see, see if he can hold the fort down, run the offense until you Murray. So the Nuggets back. would send Monte Morris and a pick for Brunson? Monte Morris, Compazzo, and 25 for Brunson and Richardson. So they think that they think that they would think that Brunson is that much better than Monty Morris. I I'm he, I'm thinking of a money thing too. If they care about saving long term money, because Monty Brunson's Morris Brunson's about to get paid too. True, I just don't know how much. So like Monty Morris is under contract for nine million dollars for the next three seasons. So if they're sitting, you know, Josh Richardson expiring, Capazzo is an expiring. So it's like, can if they're if they value long term money, like. I, Monte Morris had a, a great run in the playoffs, so I get the whole like, oh, Monte would be better than Jalen Brunson in this scenario. I, I get all of that. I'm just saying if Denver is looking at saying, 
would the swap out be that big of a difference and we could save money long term because we want to sign Aaron Gordon to an extension. Michael Porter Jr.'s contract's coming up as extension. Jamal Murray ha- already has a big deal. Like if they're caring about long term money, that could that's the main thing about it. Their numbers are so similar. Like ten point for their career, ten points a game, just about twenty two minutes a game. Uh forty eight percent from the field, thirty eight percent from three, <laughs> like eighty percent from the line. Uh two rebounds, three and a half assists and like a tur- around a turnover. Like that's their like they have the exact same numbers basically. Uh yeah, really interesting. So like Monty Morris would be the backup in Dallas if that's the case. Compazzo. Monty Morris it, is also like quietly 26 years old too. So Brunson Yeah. Compazzo would be oh, the new one year JJ Barea. Brunson's about to be 25. <laughs> Dang. Um and then yeah, you get the, you know, 20 26 overall pick in that scenario so yeah i don't understand that one but what would you do with the 26 pick you pick you'd pick uh, ao i guess now you don't have brunson but you have monte morris so yeah i mean i, I would still like him yeah there's some other like big wing i don't know if trey murphy's gonna last that long in the draft there's mm-hmm. some other guys um yeah alabama wing that i like too but anyway um if you're utah and you're wanting to clear up money for mike conley and you don't want to like you're trying to just clear up some of this like yeah walk through the Utah thing for people that don't know Utah's cap sheet. Utah has like 130 million dollars on their books for next season. That's not including Mike Conley. And so I was just looking at the roster and the, they have the 30th the overall. cap is like 110. So like yeah. they're already 20 million to almost 20 million dollars over the salary cap without Mike Conley. Like we're not just talking about a little bit of a luxury tax. They're they're gonna pay a lot. Yeah. So if they're sitting there saying hey. Like we don't want to pay the craziest amount of luxury tax. Is there a way we can at least shave off that that bill a little bit because we want to bring Mike Conley back? And they look around the league saying, "All right, we have Derek Favors and Royce O'Neal both make around not nine to ten million dollars. Will somebody just absorb that contract and we'll give you the thirtieth overall pick? Because the thirtieth overall pick being a first round pick, there's guaranteed money there too. So you wouldn't have to pay that first round pick. You would also get off the money, get off ten million dollars from Favors or Royce O'Neal." So my question is, if you're Dallas, would you absorb that contract for the 30th overall pick and just take favors and that pick for free or Royce O'Neal and the pick for free? So Royce O'Neal, 100%. I don't understand why Utah would do that with Royce O'Neal. But yeah, 100% yeah. Royce O'Neal. That's a guy you could play in the finals. He would be one of those big wings for sure. Like that's your Jay Crowder if you're trying to do the Suns scenario, right? Like yeah. completely. Well, I only said Royce O'Neal because it's like, are they giving away Joe Ingles for free? Or are they giving away Jordan Clarkson for free? No, yeah. Are they right. giving away Bognanovich for free? These no. are all guys who make over ten million dollars that they're probably not giving up for free. So it's got to be somebody. <laughs> yeah, it's got to be someone. And it's like, yeah, Royce O'Neal starts for them, but uh, yeah, Derek Favors is probably the one that they would do this with. He makes nine point seven this year. Player option for ten million next year. That one is one I'm a little more iffy on. What does Derek Favors do for the Mavericks? The Mavericks they have a bunch of centers already. All of a sudden, he comes down. Then what does Dwight Powell do? I mean, there's so many different. Yeah. Like, can he play with KP? I wouldn't do I that. I guess, no, right? Like, no. I wouldn't do that, too. Would they do that with Bojan? I don't think so, but. No, no, they're, he's too good. Are they really trying to get off money? He's too good to just give away. I would do that in a heartbeat if they He's would. making 18.7 and then 19 and a half next year. Oof. Yeah, that's big time money, but. All right, let me throw you the mega one that I sent you earlier today at the very Oh, end. let's go. Save the best for last. <laughs> All right, the, if the Lakers are really sitting there saying, hey, we want a, a, a good point guard, Chris Paul, Westbrook, like these names have been you know thrown out there for them. <laughs> Is there a way for them to get a Westbrook or Chris Paul if you're the Wizards? And you're like, all right, we don't want to give up Westbrook for nothing, but he's also due like over $44 million in the next few seasons. So <laughs> I don't know like his trade value, what the Lakers have to offer and everything. So let's just do a three team trade. This is going to be confusing to explain over the pod, but I was going to say, I'm just going to sit back and here we go. The wizards would receive KCP Porzingis and the 22nd overall pick from the Lakers. The Lakers would receive Westbrook and Tyrell Terry. The Mavericks would receive Montrez Harrell, Kyle Kuzma, and the 15th overall pick from the Wizards. Ooh. So if you're the Wizards, you're swapping out Russ, Russ for Porzingis, and you're basically moving down seven spots in the draft and picking up KCP. And, and a lot of that money, like that's 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 almost what, like $14 million a year? 
That's exactly. wild to yeah. go down from Russ to KP is $14 million. Yeah, and you know, KP's Man. younger, all of that. You're like, hey, what is KP? Bradley Beal. We still get our first round draft pick. We still get a guard in KCP. Whatever. The Lakers, you form your big three with Westbrook, you know, AD and LeBron, and have fun with the rest of the roster. <laughs> if you're the Mavericks, once again, you don't get the bona fide number two guy in this scenario. You get Montrez Harrell, Kuzma, and you the do 50- get another star, though. Oh, come on. This one hurt my soul to do, but I think there would be some Mavs fans out there who do this deal. Now, there's remind, also <clears throat> remind people what the Mavs are getting in this deal. They're sending out Porzingis and Tyrell Terry, and that's it, right? Yeah. And Richardson? And, no. And no, then they, they would one. get they, get they would get Harold Kuzma and the 15th overall pick from the Wizards. Yeah. So it's like, hey, you get you get Kuzma, whatever. If you're really high on Kuzma, then you might like this deal. Um if you're not, then you're like, why are we even talking about this deal? You also get the 15th overall pick on the draft. Like, who is that? Like, if you're sitting there saying uh, Garuba, which Garuba and Monsters Harold, that'd be funny because Garuba would outplay all of his minutes. Kuzma's a guy that has li- at least shown that he can play in a playoff series. At least yeah. he's, like, he's one of those wings. He can hit a shot. He can play a little defense. Like, he's at least proven that. I mean, he's not going to be a, like, he's not going to be a star. Like, it's, I don't think he's ever going to be a 20 point per game guy. He may develop into that, but I don't think he's going to be that. But if you want him to just be a solid wing that can shoot and all that, then yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's a money aspect of this too, because Harold will be on expiring. And then Kuzma is just like, you're getting off a lot of money in this scenario. Um, there's also another like form of this trade too, to where Harold has a player. Harold's a player option for nine point seven. So in it, yeah. from some Instagram comments and things that he's made, I'm not sure he's going to pick that up. But he may not have offers. Well, he could, yeah, he could pick it up with you know the intention of being traded. And true, like, true, true. That's the thing that gets tricky with the guys like Harold, Josh Richardson. You know, if there's some stuff that on draft night and they're looking at it and they're saying, hey, like you're. Draft happens before the deadline for a lot of these players and their options. It happens, you know, the day after, two days after, whatever. If they're sitting there on draft night, sitting there, you know, telling Josh Richardson, I'm just saying, you know, hypothetically, hey, we have a trade to send you to the Lakers if you pick up your option. Then, okay. Like, he's yeah, probably going right. to pick it up either way. But still, it's like in Montrez Harrell, if they're telling Harrell, hey, we know you're going to opt out, but if you want to opt in, We'll see. We have a deal with Dallas right now, and you can play with Luca and those guys. And like, would he just opt in at that? So I think those those are the conversations that can take place sometimes. So I don't know how I feel about this one. I don't think I would do it, even though I would. That fifteenth overall pick would be kind of cool to have, but I, I I don't think I would. It's it's at least intriguing, I guess. There's another scenario in which you send Josh Richardson out to uh, to Washington. You get back Davis Bertans. It's more of an incentive for Washington to do that. Deal. In the same framework of this deal with the you know KP going out and you getting back yeah, yeah, yeah. Kuzma and yeah. Carroll. A lot of money to Bertans and stuff though, but you swap know, one Latvian for another. We just have fun with hypothetical trades. There you go. Not saying we do any of them, but it's just. People ask us, people, you know, tweet us, DM and say, hey, what, how could Dallas get into the draft? Here you go. Here's a handful of trades that I'm sure other fan bases would are shouting at their lungs right now saying there's no way we do any of those deals. But half these deals uh, that happen, I don't think anyone would think they'd, they would happen sometimes. So. That's true. The only one that people are like, oh, that made sense was the Seth Curry Richardson one. And then, you know, a year later, it looks completely ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Seth Curry is enjoying his time in Philly right now. He is. There you go, guys. We will be back with more. Uh, we will probably do some some stuff. Next week's draft week. Next week is draft week. Man, it's crazy. It's happening. The next next couple weeks here is draft, free agency, Luca playing with Slovenia. Like this is the these next couple weeks are it. Where the the downtime is over. <laughs> yeah, downtime's over, and then then we'll get downtime again after free agency for a little bit. Summer league, yeah, and then we'll be back. There you yeah, go. it'll be fun. Guys, thanks so much for listening to Locked On Mavs. Boom.